It's all painted, but obviously this isn't gonna work. The Fantex G360A PC case features a mesh front panel for ample airflow, room for full-length GPUs up to 400 millimeters long, 360 millimeter radiator support, and integrated DRGB lighting compatible with all motherboard RGB lighting controllers. To see the full list of specs and colors available, follow the link in the description below. Okay, so just kind of a quick tour of the new paint. You see, because our colors are like gray and red, we've got red accents and stuff everywhere. Not to be confused with this couch. This couch is not staying. This has been with us since the old, old studio. Um, anyway, so here's the new space. Check this out. So it's painted. We've got our signature red stripe. Remember, we even had the stripes that are part of our logo. That couch isn't staying there. That's just where it got delivered. What we're going to do today is we're going to set up our desk. We need to get out of that little a little room. It got really crammed when we had to move everything in away from the wall so that the painters could paint. Now that it's done, literally as of yesterday, we can finally start building our desks. So Nick is actually currently at Ikea getting a couple more of uh, sit-stand frames. And they're not the Ikea sit-stands. We'll show you what they are. I actually love these sit-stand frames, but I don't use a sit-stand. I just prefer to sit, sit and flop or sit and blob, whatever. Phil and Nick are the ones that are like, you know, you gotta limber up, stay so stretch, and I'm the one that's just like, I'm at desk. You know, so anyway, we are going to show you once again the most quintessential, cliche prerequisite to be a tech YouTuber, and that is the IKEA hack. Only I didn't use a Carlby. So we're going to start with mine since I'm not using the sit stand. We need Nick to come back. So this is the Alex drawer set, but this is the wide set. Um, it's funny because the wider drawers are shorter than the standard Alex drawers, which everyone uses, and the ones I'm using at home with my home setup. So, I mean, you look at that one, you can see I'm using the little furniture feet to stand off the desk and stuff. I had to add four foot, four foot legs. Four, the <laughs> desk is up here. Uh, these are four inch legs on the bottom. I don't know what that equates to in your um, communist units. <laughs> Send your hate mail to <laughs> someone else. Uh, anyway, so that gets the desk platform up to a little bit higher where I want it to be. These come with casters normally. And I don't want casters for something that's a base for my desk. Um, this is the black brown, you know, and it, it's dusty, you need to clean it. But here's the other thing, and I'll, I will do the best I can to remember to put links to all of this down below. One of the things that makes this the Ikea hack is taking a countertop from Ikea and putting it on top of Alex drawers is like probably the most cost-effective way to get a big area for a desk. But you can get these furniture feet, which are adjustable if you need them to be, which gives you a little bit of extra like modernism, if you will. And this is exactly how I did it back home to get the desk up off of the, the surface here. That way you just, it just looks nicer. Where the hell's the hole? Okay. So I will be putting two inch ones right here. Now I'm really tall. So I tend to have my desk be quite a ways up off the surface, like the floor. Um, since Phil is more than a foot shorter than me, his needs are very different than mine. That's why a sit-stand desk for him is perfect. But I'll be mounting these down on here. So that's how my, my drawers will look. My drawer, not my underwear, <laughs> the drawers. And you can see I still have to do that one there um, and mount these down. But I already put the feet on there as you can see. And the nice thing is what we lack now at any of our desks is any sort of storage. So our desks are a complete mess. Like for me as the business owner, I've got receipts and stuff all over the place that I still have to catalog and I've got like notes and just all kinds of crap all over the desk. And I usually would use like a dining room table, but I'm also not going to be using that 65 inch monitor anymore, um, the BFGD. That will be probably making its way into the test bench set. That way it's big and you guys can see it when I'm talking about things in a little panel. So I'm trying to think about the user experience as well as how we build this space out. So I'm thinking my desk is going to go here, centered kind of between these plugs. Here's the four port plug right there where our four ethernets come into this side of the room. And then I'm thinking Phil and Nick will be on this side of the room right here. They can decide who wants to be left, who wants to be right. But we added some more AC drops in here too, because we want to make sure that we can account for the heat load that'll be in this room. And the nice thing about this one is it blows right towards us. It's a 360, but it blows right towards us. So we'll, like in this room right now, it's, it's uh, almost 95 degrees outside right now, or 97 degrees. It's 70 Fahrenheit in here. I don't know if that is in Celsius. It's cool. So anyway, let's, uh, let me screw these down. And then, what, what you gotta make sure when you're doing this hack, by the way, 
The screws that come with it typically are fine. It's interesting though, because they're a cone. I mean, they'll work and I did that at home, but I would prefer to have a flat machine head, which I don't have any of those. So I hope I don't have to run to Home Depot. The other thing I need to check and see is the length. Are they longer than the top? Which means will they stick down through? And obviously if they were to stick down through, I wouldn't be able to open the drawer because it would be hitting or screwing into the drawer. So these are the kind of things you need to make sure when you're just grabbing stuff on Amazon going, will it fit? Because this will actually poke through. So now I've got to dig through my stuff, see if I have any screws that will work for this. Otherwise I might just have to chop it off with a little bolt cutter. Just So here, here's the double white Alex, not double white, but the white Alex drawers, because I'm wide, with the four inch feet on the bottom, two inch feet on the top. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the feet real quick. This one's slightly crooked. Oh, well, whatever. I used black screws that were flat and domed with flat bottom, and they're black, so that way they don't really stand out. <sighs> People are gonna be like, why don't you screw it right to the top? Why not screw it to the table? I, I did this at home already, and I first was trying to line it up all perfect, where to mount it to the table. I like to kick my feet up. And here's the problem is if every now and then I go to get off the desk and I'll push away or something. And <laughs> I got to thinking, if they're not mounted here and they're mounted to the table and I push the desk and it scoots, the whole thing will like, bam, and it will like fall off and it'd be like, shwa and it'll be like, totally got pitted. Smack the lip, whoop, drop down, shred the barrel and get pitted. Yeah. Let's go ahead and show you. So here's the thing, everyone always goes with the Carly. I didn't want the Carly because I wanted something different. You like how I have the knife, but I'm just, yeah. I don't want to scratch the table. Ah. Oh yeah, <laughs> dead. You want to cut it? <sighs> Give me a minute. I was trying to figure out why this felt weird. And I realize now it's because the Alex drawers are deeper. They're they're near the dip, the deep. So that's fine though. Um, what I have to do now is figure out where I want it to go. See, it can still sort of slide easy. And that's why I still think I want to put just maybe on the rear, um, just a little square of the double-sided like 3M tape and then unstick it and unstick it and unstick it. That way it doesn't get stuck to it, but it gives it some anti-slip. Man, if you come and look at this from a distance though, like the black with that top definitely has that look and feel that I want. It's not as deep as I think a lot of people are used to when it comes to desks. But like I said, this is exactly what I'm using back home. And I think it, it's gonna work out really well. I might still use these also in the back to create with actual cabinetry, make my own like cabinets and stuff with this top back there for the, what I call the PC built set. I really did a bang up job of unbox, unbo unboxing, taking it out of the cardboard. One of the problems though, when you do this, this Ikea hack is there's no cable management built into this at all. So I got these off Amazon. Again, links to this will be down below. These are just universal cable management trays. They come in a two pack. I got three two packs, which is more than we need because I'd rather have extras, you never, you never, you never can have too many cable managements. But they're, they're kind of short like this, which is nice because I can do them side by side for a wide opening like this. But if you have a short desk, then this will allow you to be able to, well, manage anything that needs to be managed as a desk, by the way. And oh I my thought, God, how many layers? I thought they smelled bad on the outside. You mount this up underneath and then you mount this to the bracket. So I'll go ahead and get it mo like put up there and then we'll just take you under the desk and show you what it looks like put together. So there they are hung. You could do them separate like I did or you could actually slide them together and then that hole and that hole pass through and then you lose about three inches worth of it and I didn't want to lose that. So there we go. I can have a power strip in here and bricks for you know the monitor and whatever else because I do have um, some edifier speakers and stuff that are gonna be going on here. But uh, yeah, so this is, these were like, how much were these? Yeah, I'll put them, I'll put all this stuff in the description, but if we were to kind of add all this up, this top right here is one of the more expensive tops because it's a 98 inch top, but you can get you can get it in 74 inch as well, or you can get the butcher block top, um, which is more rectangular rather than being so long like this. And those are like $279, I think it is. <clears throat> but you could also get just the drawers and these legs if you were to you know, have a butcher block or something that you prefer to have. And what I like about these is that you can, you can adjust the height of them because they're not 
It's not touching on all four corners perfectly because of the fact that there's always gonna be a slight, maybe a slight twist to the wood. Now these are intended to be screwed down to the counters that would flatten them out. So we're just dealing with, and there's also no weight on there yet either. Like I don't have a tower or anything on here yet, monitor and all that. But these, this is one of the best hacks that you'll find that brings in terms of the amount of like square footage or square meter worth of desk space per price being some of the, the most aggressive out there. You just have to kind of think it up and do it yourself. You got white drawers, I got gray drawers, stainless steel, chrome, black feet, ton of different tops to choose from. A lot of people go with the Carl B, or in our case, the Barca Boda, whatever it's called, because of the density of this wood. It's more expensive because it's denser. If it's not dense and you have a big gap here, it can start to bow on you. So that's been the problem people will sometimes have is they'll put the desk or the drawers too wide and then they get a dip. So you would want to support the middle in some way or put a crossbar or something on there to give some extra support. But anyway, the um, cost of these cable management pieces are, so they're 45 bucks, so not the cheapest. <clears throat> I did go with these because I thought they looked the nicest that will match my particular theme the most. Um, but anyway, there you go. We're not done though, this is my desk hack. We now need to work on this one. So this right here, as you can see, this is the Ikea Upspell. The Republic of Gamers from ASUS collaboration with Ikea. This is a sit-stand desk. By far the beefiest, most stable sit-stand we've ever seen. And we've got autonomous and stuff now, which are wobbly pieces of crap versus this, because look at those legs. They're like triangulated and beefy. But we bought just the sit-stand portion without the top, because we're gonna put the same tabletop on it. So the nice thing about being able to buy just the frame, you can put your own butcher block or your own tabletop on there. Um, or if you were to just buy it complete, it's $100 more with their top. Dude, this kind of looks so good. And there's still plenty of overhang for the drawers. Yeah, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, don't, pull it, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> so it's actually been a few hours since uh, we showed you guys where we were last. So you can see now we've got two of the ROG um, Upspell. You know, that's how you say it, Upspell. Um, sit stand desk, so that ROG collaboration, you know, ASUS and IKEA. It's funny because check this out. They're gonna put their towers on the floor. They they want them on the floor, um, not on top. And I perfectly fine with that. You know, they can set the desk how they want. Mine's on top just because I have the wider drawer sitting right there. But the Alex desk, or the Alex drawer thing, like we talked about, it's funny because it looks like it's resting on it, but it's not. There is like three millimeters of gap sitting in there. It's crazy. So watch. Let me lift the desk up just a. a Few centimeters. Now watch when it auto stops. Oops. It's crazy how that's just a perfect fit. So I got to thinking about it. I was like, everyone, especially IKEA, knows that the Alex drawer Carl B countertop hack is the most commonly used desk hack in the world. Phil was a little disappointed because this is about two inches higher than where he's used to with his desk, and given his height, that's a big deal. So we were like, why would they do that? And then we put this the drawer under there. We went, I bet you anything, the minimum stop point was specifically so people could fit Alex drawers underneath it, which sucks. I, we need to find out if there's a way to maybe like move the stop. I'm sure it's just a switch, but if it wants to leave it like this, I'm just, I'm gonna get him a better footrest to get his feet up more. Because the problem is like with his chair at the height, he needs to be at to be proper ergonomic form. He, he sits very proper when he's uh, editing and stuff. His feet don't touch the floor. And that's obviously a problem for the hips and you know all that sort of stuff. So this is where we are. Uh, Nick's got an identical desk. This one still has to be wiped down though. It's got like dust and stuff on yeah. the edge of it. So they match. We have the same tops on all three. I think the wood tones with the black go really good with the gray and the red. And uh, all this gray and red stuff that we didn't even like plan, like the LG monitor that Phil <laughs> wants to use. Cause we're gonna get new monitors for in here where they, they all match and stuff. But for now, it's got the LG 34 inch ultra wide. And he's got the prototype JS2 Sense gaming mat that had the red stitching around the side, um, which obviously we switched to black. But it matches because I'm in front of the red part of the wall. Yeah, it does match. <laughs> yeah, we're excited about the way this is coming coming together. Also, too, I want to show some of the cable management stuff we're doing down here. I haven't pulled them nice and tight yet, but if you look, we've got these things. I just ordered trays of these from Amazon. They're just double-sided sticky tape cable management clips, and I've got these spaced along the baseboard, which is just the black baseboard. And the nice thing is it sticks really good and Phil's power strip cable and then the ethernet cables. So one's going to Phil's desk and yeah, they're, they're not pulled tight and organized yet, but I'm just showing you how we routed them. 
And then his comes out right over here along the wall. I haven't put the end on it yet because I need to find out how, where I need to cut it. So I wanted the cables to be the proper length that way there's no coils of them sitting zip tied anywhere. And then I got another one that runs all the way over here for Nick's computer, which in hindsight, I should have just asked them to run a conduit into the wall right here that we would have had ethernet on this side as well. But, and to be honest, I could have ran that myself. I just chose not to because I wanted to keep it all you know, uniform and coming out of the same plugs. So you can see this part of the stu new studio room is coming together, but if you look at that side of the room, that's a problem that's just literally staring me in the face that I've got to deal with. So what we got to deal with now is ending this video so we can continue with getting work done and move on to the more crappy content. So anyway, that's the IKEA desk hack stuff. You can see it now with a couple different types, or two different types of frames, the homemade legs and stuff with Amazon. I'll put links to all this down below. The bark adoba, bark adoba, I don't remember what it was called, tabletops for all three with this herringbone pattern. And I think the wood tones and the blacks go really well with this. So thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna have a lot of fun to putting together the PC building slash review seven, do cabinetry, all kinds of cool stuff. Someday. <laughs> <laughs>